I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. I grew up in a non-Christian home in the suburbs of Philadelphia, the city of Rocky Balboa, the Italian stallion. I overcame uh, lots of handicaps. That's a little bit like the story of, of my life. I was in the generation that when you graduated from high school, if you didn't go to college, you would get drafted into the military. I know I don't look old enough to uh, have been in that generation, but, but I actually am. So I was pretty lost uh, through high school, had a girlfriend that broke up with me. I was really, uh, I think now in retrospect, I had no purpose in life, was depressed, didn't know what to do. I did end up getting drafted into the, to the army and I was hoping to avoid going to Vietnam and within seven months there I was. Unfortunately, I got heavily involved in drugs during my uh, one year stay in Vietnam and when I got back from Vietnam, I started to sell drugs. Uh, drugs were, the drug culture and all of that had pretty much taken control of my life. I went through a period where I'd do anything to get high. I had a surprise happen that the army sent me to Okinawa, which is a little island uh, that's part of the nation of Japan. And I was repairing trucks that were used in the Vietnam War. Uh, there was a guy named Robin. Now he used to smoke pot with the rest of us. And we had a little apartment. And we'd listen to music and, and uh, sit on futons and, and do drugs. Uh, Robin, I could tell that Robin wasn't as into it as the other guys. And uh, so Robin stopped coming around for a while. And then one day he, he came to the apartment and he had to come through the kitchen knocks on the door, and he has a Bible under his arm, and he told me that Jesus Christ had changed his life. Now, I was 20 years old, and I had never met anyone who said that, who ever said anything to me about Jesus. It really, it made me feel very insecure. And so we got into a big argument about uh, all the inconsistencies in the Bible, which, of course, I had never read. And, you know... I went away from that thinking, this guy knows what he believes. I don't know what I believe. I had this little thought in the back of mind, in my mind growing up. There must be a true way of living. And if somebody ever told me what the truth was, I think I would do it. I had no idea that the truth would involve coming to know Christ as my Savior at that time. And so... One night when I would, so this guy Robin would come by the apartment and instead of listening to music, we would talk about the Bible. And we'd have discussions, mainly we're in the Gospels, a little on prophecy. And so I saw myself moving from the anti-Jesus group to the middle and then to the pro-Jesus group, but I still hadn't given my heart to Christ. And so uh, one night in my, I was laying in my bunk uh, in, in Okinawa, and I thought, well, Rusty, you have tried so many things to try to make sense out of life and to find purpose and meaning. Why not try Jesus Christ? And so Robin had told us how to pray and invite Christ into our lives, and I asked him to be, I knew I'd messed my life up up till that point, and so I asked him to be the Lord of my life and to take control. The first miracle that God did in my life was my desire to take drugs stopped. And in fact, I was a dealer. I kept the drugs in this little apartment and I flushed them all down the toilet. I didn't necessarily think it was wrong at that point in my life, but I just thought, I want to change. I want to go uh, and be with Jesus and walk with him. Well, there were some unhealthy things about this group because... Uh, I think about seven of us had come to know Christ through, through the witness of Robin without any outside help. I, I thought we were the only Christians on the planet Earth because I didn't know and I was very ignorant. And uh, I, to my knowledge, I had never met a Christian. But, uh, so we thought we might be the apostles being risen from the dead. And I thought I was John. I was going to be John. 
So, <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately, Robin got orders to go somewhere else, and he didn't encourage this kind of thinking. This, this was more the, the new Christian guys. When Robin left, our little group started to really uh, <clears throat> lose its momentum. And I, I kept reading the Bible. I, I was more tempted to go back to my old way of life. There was a thing called Duty Day with God that they put on. I decided to go to it because I got a day off. And it was given by the chaplains. And most of the chaplains, I think, on that particular base didn't know the Lord. And I could tell. So they passed around the microphone. I asked a question to the chaplains that would have given people, anyone, an idea that I probably knew Christ. And so there was a break right after that. I go to this break, and there's these really nerdy-looking guys with, uh, you know, like 18 pens in their pocket, and, and uh, this something's in there that's making their shirt uh, bulge out. And they were navigators. They started to talk to me, and they were like flies on uh, honey, you know, and so, you know, and they asked me, and they could tell I knew the Lord, and so they invited me to come to a Bible study, and they showed me this little packet of verses. And I had, uh, I had realized I wanted to be able to share Christ with my friends. And I had realized to do that, I had to know the Bible. And I thought the best way to do that might be to memorize the Bible. I had this little red Bible that they used to make that had verses in it. So I would memorize one of those verses. And then I'd go on to another one, and I'd forget the other one. And so... When they talked about this top TMS, they didn't explain what it means. TMS is topical memory system. I thought, I need to get that TMS thing, and that, that would help me. So I, I went to the Bible study, and I was resistant to that because one time I had gone to Sunday school. My mother made me go, even though she didn't go to church. Didn't have a very vital faith in God. And at the Sunday school class, I hated it because I didn't know any of the kids. And they did a flannel graph of Noah's Ark. And so in my mind, going to this Bible study would mean I'd have to see another flannel graph of Noah's Ark. I said, I already got that down, you know, with the, you know, all the animals. And, but because I wanted the TMS, I went. And went, to my surprise, I had tried to go to chapel. In chapel, the worship was like a funeral dirge. I mean, it was just really pathetic. And I, I thought, you know, if you're going to sing songs, you know, to, to the Lord, you need to sing it with all your heart. And so, so I stopped going to chapel. When I went to this navigator meeting, there was about 100 guys, men. We, they didn't sit down. There was no piano, no, no organ. And we sang a few hymns that everybody knew the words to. I, know, I remember one of them was, How Great Thou Art, because I, I knew that one. They were singing at the top of their lungs, and it wholeheartedly, and I thought, wow, I think I've di died and gone to heaven. So I, st I started going to those meetings. Somebody began to meet with me, helped me to grow, sh showed me how to have a quiet time, began to memorize scripture. And so that's kind of the start of my Christian life.